In this video, we're going to take a look at the very first step of using a CloudNet platform, namely how to start a CloudNet cluster. To get going, we'll uh, head on over to biocloudcentral.org, which is a portal that makes it very easy to start CloudNet clusters. So, each individual CloudNet cluster is defined by several fields, and these fields are exposed here on, uh, on biocloudcentral.org. So, to begin with, we need to give our cluster a name, it, and we need to provide a password that will be used to protect access to the particular cluster. Next, we need to choose which cloud we would like to run this particular cluster on. For now, I'll start the Australian National Nectar Cloud. Next, we need to provide the credentials that are used to access and uh, use resources on the chosen cloud. So these credentials are typically available from your uh, cloud provider. In the context of Amazon, this is available from the security credentials page, a link right off of here for other clouds. They're available from uh, other, uh, other methods. In this case, I had the keys or the credentials required stored in a separate file. In the last piece of the puzzle is the type of instance we would like to use to run the master or the head node of this particular cluster. So different types uh, exist depending on the cloud you have chosen. For this particular case, I'll just stick with the small instance type. And then we click start an instance button at the bottom. And BioCloud Central goes off to request an instance of uh, CloudNAN, the CloudNAN's instance. Uh, that will be used to run our CloudNAN cluster. So while this uh, is taking place, I will talk a little bit about what are the steps that are being performed on the back end and what is actually happening. One of the core principles of uh, using uh, a distributed machine is to uh, secure access to it. So in the context of cloud computing, this is done via security groups, which essentially define a firewall rules of who is and who is not able to access a particular instance. Uh, BioCloud Central is creating these rules under your account now and is associate and will associate those rules with this instance that is being uh, started. Another aspect of uh, security in terms of accessing your instance is the key pair that is used to access the particular instance via SSH or command line tools. Uh, the BioCloud Central is also generating a new key pair under your account. If a key pair of given name already exists in your account, it is not generated, but instead you can reuse the old one. If a given key pair is created for the first time, you are able to download this um, key pair from this site uh, right here, because I've obviously used this before. Uh, I'm unable to download the key at this moment. If you ever lose the particular key, you can simply delete the key from the cloud provider itself and the BioCloud Central Portal will recreate the key the next time you request an instance. And the last piece of the puzzle is the user data. The user data allows each individual instance to be customized for a specific need. This user data needs to be formatted in a specific format and that is again uh, uh, one of the components that the BioCloud Central Portal actually does on your behalf. So it takes all this data that we've provided in the form on the previous page, as well as the cloud-specific information that it has stored locally, composes that into a uh, formatting, formatted user data, and then uh, issues a request for an instance to the cloud that we selected as a um, um, as our cloud where we want to run the cloud name cluster. And then we wait, uh, and once the, the, the instance has been requested, we wait for uh, the instance to actually get, uh, get instantiated and for all the services to start running and configure themselves until the cloud name user interface or the web application is uh, ready to take on the requests. And here we go. In uh, just under three minutes, uh, this entire process was completed without us actually having to do anything. At this point, we have uh, an IP address to the instance. By clicking on this instance, 
we are presented with a uh, authentication box that requires us to provide a password. This is the password we, we, that we provided on the initial BiCloud Central uh, form. The username we can leave empty and the password uh, we need to provide. After we have successfully authenticated, uh, we will be presented with the CloudMens um, Cloud web interface or the console. Uh, CloudMed provides four different types of clusters. It provides a fully configured Galaxy cluster ready to perform bioinformatics analyses. It allows you to uh, create a derived cluster from a, a shared cluster. It, provides you, it allows you to create a data cluster or a test cluster. We'll cover each of these in subsequent videos. For now, we will just choose a test cluster as one that is required uh, just for playing around with. Uh, and it's very quick to configure. So after we've decided which type of cluster we would like, we simply hit start the cluster and Cloudman goes off to configure the cluster. Uh, we know that the cluster is configured once the application's icon turns green. Uh, for different types of cluster, both of these icons will turn green. And there we go, the Cloudman cluster is completely configured. So in a couple of clicks, a couple of minutes, we're essentially ready to perform the computations. In other videos, uh, again, go through the process of actually connecting to the cluster via command line interfaces and so on. In this, con in this video, I'll just talk a little more about the interface that CloudMan um, has. So namely, uh, it, it, so basically it is divided in three, um, three segments. So we have the top segment, which is which gives us control over the cluster. We have a middle segment, which gives us the status of the cluster, namely the main disk and the, uh, um, the number of nodes uh, and the services that are running. On the right-hand side here, we see the uh, sort of quick overview of the status of the cluster. The gray boxes uh, are just placeholders, while the green boxes are the, um, boxes that indicate there are live instances. So we currently have only one, namely the master instance alive. Color code is green as being uh, all okay. And then the little uh, gray glyphs inside indicate the load of the instance over the past 15 minutes. And the bottom section of the CloudMan interface is the actual status log. It gives us the information about the steps and the things that the CloudMan cluster has done or is currently uh, taking place. Like I said, in other videos, we will take a look at how to add nodes and remove nodes uh, and other features that, that are supported. Uh, once the need for this particular cluster diminishes, that can be even for one night or permanently or um, a month, we can simply terminate this cluster, to terminate it, so we click Terminate Cluster, you have two options at, at termination time. You can choose to automatically terminate the master instance, which is clicked by default. If you do not terminate the master instance by default, uh, it, will, uh, it will remain running, and it's probably desirable to terminate it via uh, other means, either a dashboard in the particular cloud or via API calls. And lastly, you also have an option of deleting this cluster. If you click this option, uh, all the data will be deleted at the time this instance is terminated, meaning that anything you might have uploaded or changed is also gone. Uh, for this context in this demo, I will also click off this uh, box and say yes, power off. Cloudman goes off to deconfigure the cluster and indicates uh, when the cluster has actually terminated. And that's all there's to it.